Let's deep dive into that Samsung node. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. Uh, new intro. Comment down below if you like this one better or the last one better. I'm curious. I I just wanted to change it up a little bit to see how it would go over with the uh, with the audience, right? But today we're gonna be looking at ampere versus Turing, like voltage and power scaling. Um, gonna be using the 2080 Ti and the uh, 3080, obviously, for th for this comparison. Now, be be before you comment down below how it's not fair, uh, don't worry, I got you, fam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that's that. That was my makeshift uh, air conditioner blowing into the card. Uh, what I wanted to do there was uh, like the 2080 Ti is on the water block. The temperature never goes above like 43, 42. Uh, I wanted the same thing for the 3080, but I don't have a water block for it. So with the air conditioner blowing right into it, it topped out at about 45. So this is pretty. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. You want to say hi? Come say hi. Oh, my kitty hates being picked up. Look how pretty she is. Okay, my kitty. <laughs> she she absolutely hates being picked up, but she tolerates it because she loves me. Anyway, what was this? Oh, yeah, right. So the air conditioner uh, tops out at about 45 with like the highest voltage setting. So that's about the scaling for for the 3080 in this video is going to be probably what you're going to get with a water block anyway. So this is a really good comparison for uh you future water block owners. So the methodology today, I did um I'll show you the graphs, but I did uh from 800 millivolts uh voltage lock uh up in 50 millivolt increments so 800, 850, 900, 950, 1 volt, 1.05, and then 1 1.1. 1 .1. Um, then the goal being is to see if Turing and Ampere are generated, or um, not generated, if they're locked at the same voltage, what power draw are they going to generate? And I used um, Time Spy Extreme 4K because I wanted to... I wanted to load the cards as much as possible, right? So these numbers that I'm going to show you aren't really applicable to 1080p because 1080p in itself just draws a lot less power. So you can clock it a bit higher and overvolt it a bit. But let me get into the numbers here. So these are the readings that I got. Um, like, so let me, ex let me explain. 800 millivolts. So what I did is I locked the voltage at 800 millivolts. And then I went up in the highest clock speed that I can before the card crashed uh, on both of them. And then what I also did was I recorded the power draw of each card. And then recorded the Time Spy Extreme score as well as that, right? So you can you can pause the video here and go over these numbers. Um, the Time Spy Extreme is about 1,500 more on the 3080 uh, at each kind of... It's, it's kind of interesting because they, they draw the same power at kind of the same, you know, voltage. Until, right up until, where is it here? This one, yeah. 950 millivolts. As soon as you go over 950 millivolts on the 3080, power draws, like, we're getting into ridiculous territory here. So, like, we had from 950 millivolts to 1 volt... We had a 60 megahertz increase and a 80 watt power draw increase. And anything above one volt, the data was invalid because I actually hit the shunt mod power cap. And then the, um, you know, the, the frequency would bounce up and down like crazy. So the scores here were completely invalid. I would have to, 
I would have to get a higher power limit BIOS or do a double shunt to alleviate these bottlenecks here for power. But I'm not going to do that because the, the, the power draw on an air cooler as this is already ridiculous. But you can see that Turing scales all the way up to 2200 megahertz here, right? At 1.093 millivolts. It, it draws 500 watts, but it's... So... Ampere is drawing 500 watts at about 1 one volt and Turing scales all the way up to 1.1 and hits about 500 watts in time spy extreme at 4k, right? So, uh, this, this is also why the 2080 Ti can be faster in 1080p gaming and uh, let me explain. So we're, we're kind of getting into a situation here where it's very similar to Intel clock speed versus Ryzen core count, right? Like, like the, the Ryzen 3900X with 12 cores at 4 gigahertz or whatever will win a Cinebench or a rendering benchmark because it's loaded 100%, right? Um, Intel will win at a 1080p gaming scenario because it's not loaded 100%. It's 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 using the clock speed to be really quick and snappy with those uh with those FPS numbers, right? So with Ampere, when you're playing at 4K, all of those cores are being loaded now. It's it it's 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 more cores can be leveraged, right? Whereas Turing, if you're at 2.2 gigahertz on that thing, 1080p isn't going to load all the cores anyway on both of these cards, so you actually want the higher clock speed. It's very interesting. So, but that's, but I also only tested it at 4K. What you, what you could actually, it's kind of interesting. What you, what you could actually do is have two different, like, uh, afterburner profiles. What you could do if you got uh, an Ampere card, you could do like a 1080p profile, have a really high voltage, like 1.1 or whatever, get it to clock to 2.1 gigahertz, so you actually have that clock speed for the lower resolution, and then it wouldn't draw very much power because it's at 1080p, right? And then when you're playing a AAA game, 4K or whatever, you have your second profile with the undervolt, you know, 900 millivolts, and that way you get your 1900 megahertz, but you're getting the scaling of all those cores. So you, if you wanted to go that way, you could, that's, that's probably what I'm going to be doing when I get my 3090 in there. I'm going to do like a really eSport, high voltage, low load profile. Then I'm going to have my AAA high load profile. That's what I'm going to be doing going forward here. Concerning power draw, the 8 nanometer node isn't bad. Like, it's not horrible. It's it's not... It's not quite 12 nanometer, but it's not... It's not really 8 nan... It's, it's actually 10... It, the, the power draw fits perfectly with 10 nanometer. Um, it has however many more transistors, but it's still drawing the same power at the same voltage as the 12 nanometer was. So, they managed to shove that many more transistors into the Samsung node while maintaining the same power draw. So, the the reason why you have that performance boost with the 3080 is because of the 320 watt power draw. The power draw is the same between Turing and Ampere, pretty much. It's just that Ampere has so many more transistors that it actually... The, the 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 eight nanometer node that they use is kind of like erased by the transistor density. That so they use their entire uh, node shrink budget to improve performance and not save power. That's essentially what they did. This is the line graph of Turing and Ampere from eight hundred millivolts to one volt because I I didn't go past one volt because Ampere was hitting the power limit here for power draw. But uh, look. It, it's straight up. As soon as it hits 950, it starts skyrocketing for the power draw. That's the limit of the 8 nanometer node. Turing, on the other hand, the 12 nanometer TSMC, it goes all the way to one. It would go. It would keep going this way until maybe 1.15, and then it would spike up. 
So, what? maybe when I get a water block for Ampere, I will revisit this and go all the way to 1.1 or 1.15 volts. And then we'll actually get a, a wider graph picture of it. But up to 1 volt here, you can already see where the lines are going to go. Um, and then this, this is your power draw, right? So if you're, if you get a 3080, you're going to want to voltage lock your card somewhere in here, 900 to 950. You want to find your sweet spot somewhere here. As soon as you hit 950, performance is gone. It's, it's done. You, like, don't even worry about that. Try and find a sweet spot in here, right? And, uh, you can go to that... You can go to my previous picture there and find out what megahertz number I actually got. So, so yeah, if you can, if you can volt it, if so, shunt mod your 3080, don't let it do its own thing, voltage lock it at like 900 millivolts, and then maybe get like 1950 megahertz out of it, and then you're laughing. You're going to have an incredible gaming experience at 4K. The, the, the core clock is not going to fluctuate. It's going to be locked. It your your FPS isn't going to be bouncing all over the place hitting those limits. It's going to it's going to be locked. It's going to be a fantastic gaming experience. That's how you make Ampere work in your favor. If you're still on Turing like a 2080 Ti, the sweet spot seems to be about 1 100 millivolts over that. So I know someone in my Discord had um 1 volt at like 2100 megahertz. That's and it draws like no power. Just do that, right? Go go for one volt. Go for maybe 1.05 tops on Turing. And you'll find a really high clock speed and a really low power draw on your 2080 Ti. Oh, but also you need the shunt or you need a um, unlocked power limit BIOS to make that work properly, right? If you play at 1080p, mostly eSport titles, I would actually get a 2080 Ti. Because you're guaranteed to clock higher. If you don't have a 4K monitor, Ampere might not work in your favor, like, at all. Like, even, even the 3070, it's still on the Samsung Node. It's not going to clock as high as Turing. It's very interesting. So, if you can get a 2080 Ti and you're an eSports player, that's actually the best eSports video card on the market right now because of the clock speed that it has. This is also, this is where AMD can swoop in though. If NVIDIA has the 4K ray tracing DLSS king, and uh, AMD can swoop in there with the, the, the TSMC 7 nanometer node, if they can get, if they can get like 2.3 gigahertz, that's going to be the eSport uh, video card to get. We're going to, we're going to see kind of a divide going here. If, um... If AMD can't compete with ray tracing or any of those high-end features, maybe they can compete on eSports. 500 FPS CSGO, um, 300 FPS Call of Duty Warzone, like, like those really low resolution, high FPS. It's kind of funny because NVIDIA had the uh, frames win games type, th type thing, and then their Ampere architecture sucks at uh, 1080p. And then AMD can kind of swoop in and take that shit from them, right? Like, maybe that's what's going to happen. But of course, shunt modding your video card gets around all of that. It, it, like, it fixes all problems. If you shunt mod a 3090, then you can just do a high voltage, low power, 1080p profile. And just crank that shit to 600 watts, and then who cares, right? It'll still clock to 2.1. You definitely cannot do that with the stock power limit profiles on these things. Not at all. You need to shunt it to get that. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the other tech tubers do this kind of a uh, uh, deep dive into the uh, Ampere architecture. That's why I wanted to do this one. And I also wanted to do it with an air conditioner blowing into it so that the power creep doesn't creep up with more voltage because of the heat, right? I wanted to keep it as cold as possible. It worked great. Um... So the numbers that you see here are with like water block numbers, right? Which So keep that in mind if you test them for yourself. Anyway, guys, feel free to go back to where those pictures were. Screenshot, share it. 
Uh, look at the data. If you have a 2080 Ti and you're looking to an, uh, do an undervolt, you can go by those numbers. Those are what I got. If you have a 3080 and you're looking for an undervolt, try the numbers that I had there. You might have some good success with those. Those took me a while to like find the sweet spot on those ones. And yeah, I think we covered some good some good data in this video. Yep, that's it for this one, guys. If you're enjoying the 3080 content, hit that subscribe button. We got a lot more coming. I have so many ideas for the, for uh, Ampere testing. Tons. Um, yeah, do the YouTube SEO stuff for me. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you like the content, hit the subscribe. And remember to post down below if you like the new intro or the old one. Because cause I want to... I want to see what we're going to go with here as like a community, right? And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.